What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dreadlabs and today we're going to talk about displacement maps. Alright, so I thought it was a good idea to revisit some older videos of mine, some older tutorials where I didn't explain things very well or where the video quality just wasn't up to speed with the rest of the videos that I release nowadays. So yeah, today I wanted to do an in-depth analyzation or an in-depth explanation on what displacement maps are and how you can use them in your designs. So what are displacement maps? Displacement maps are basically a filter in Photoshop and After Effects and in probably a lot of other software where you can displace certain aspects of your image based on light and dark values of another image and i think a good idea to explain what this does is if i'm going to show you a real life example here so what i'm going to do is i have this flat photoshop file where it's just a white background and some text and something to note because the displacement map is a filter we can only apply it to a smart object or a rasterized object so what we're going to do is convert our text object to a smart object and what i did before this video is i made two different images this one and this one and these are PSD files, so they're Photoshop files. As you can see, this one has a gradient uh, going from like all black to all white. And I'm gonna sh just show you what happens if we use this as a displacement map. So here in our layer menu, we have the uh, smart object that we just made. So we wanna go to filter, distort, displace. And this will bring up the displace menu. And for what we're gonna do now is uh, I'm gonna hold zero on the horizontal scale and I'm going to press in 50 on the vertical scale. And what this essentially means is that based on an image that we're going to use later, the horizontal scale will now not be moving and the vertical scale will move up to 50 pixels based on light and dark values of our displacement map. So we don't really have to uh, worry about these too much. I'm going to leave these the way they are. And then I'm going to click OK. And this will ask you to load in a file. So what we're going to do is go to the displacement map example one the one with the gradient that I just showed you. And you might notice this already, but um, the only files that you can use as a displacement map in Photoshop are PSD files. Let's just click on open. And you can kind of see what's happening here right now. Uh, you can see because this is a smart object, you can see the displacement filter applied here in the layer menu. I'm just gonna double click that. And instead of 50, I'm gonna press in 250 to make the uh, effect even more drastic. And now it's quite apparent what's happening here. Uh, and to make it even more apparent is what I'm gonna do is layer this file, the one that we just used as a displacement map, and layer that on top and lower the opacity. And you can see what's happening here. So based on the light and dark values of the image, the image is either moving up or down. So the lighter the image goes, the more uh, pixels it goes up and the darker the image goes, the more pixels go down. We can do this as well with the horizontal scale. So let's just put our sim 250 by 250 and load in this again. again. And as you can see, this weirds it out a little bit, but just that's just because the horizontal scale is used for a image that is basically only, there's only difference in light between vertical lines, if that makes sense. Anyways, so anyways, let's try this with another example. I'm just gonna remove the smart filter. And again, we're gonna go to filter. Uh, and this time we're gonna use this displacement map. So let's go to filter, distort, displace. And we'll do maybe like 150 for this one. And we'll click OK. And we'll load in example two. And as you can see, now based on the light and dark values, if this image is this basically distorts it even weirder. Let's layer this other file on top of each uh, the one again so we can see what's happening. So as you can see, because this is a, a way blurrier file and there's way more data in there, you know, if we zoom in, there's just only like maybe 10, 20 colors in here. Um, and here there are of course like so many different light and dark values in this image. That's basically what's happening. So you can distort your text in really cool ways. So that's basically how displacement maps work. So again, based, based on the light and dark values of an image, of another image in Photoshop, that's, it's a PSD, you can distort your image. Let's just delete the smart filter. And now I'm gonna show you some real life examples of um, something that might become useful when you're making a displacement map yourself or uh, how to use displacement maps in your advantage. But what I'm gonna do is I have a package for Dreadlabs and it's called Fill and it contains a lot of different displacement maps. So let's load in, you know what? Let's load in 25. So as you can see, this is a very distorted image. So as you can see this is a texture of asphalt and what you can do with this is basically use this in order to distort some edges around your text so let's just use number 25 of the filth package for this one so let's go to filter distort displace and uh, for this subtle distress effect what you want to do is you want to keep the uh, horizontal and vertical scale very low so i'm going to go with five pixels maybe and let's just look up the filth package by dreadlabs 
and 25 it was I think. As you can see, if we zoom in now, we have these nice distressed edges to make your text look a little bit more natural uh, compared to, you know, a, um, a very tight and hard edge uh, that you usually have in Photoshop. So this basically adds a little bit of realism to the edges of your text or to your shapes or whatever. And if you go one step further by giving this a box blur as well, you know, basically this gives a little bit more realism in your text and distorts it a little bit more. So that's one way to use displacement maps. All right, so here we have a mock-up that me and Norge Nail made. Um, so this mock-up already contains a displacement map. Um, you don't really need to worry too much about that because it's basically, you know, some asset that you buy uh, right off the get-go. If you are interested in getting these assets, you really do support Dreadlabs. The links are in the description, but of course I'm here to explain you something. So let's just duplicate the base of this t-shirt uh, to this new canvas. And I'm going to show you another, you know, reason why to use the space maps. Essentially, what we're going to do here is we're going to add some text in here. And I want it to fold with the wrinkles of the t-shirt. And since the t-shirt is a, a most wrinkly here, what I'm going to do is do like a very large text on the side here. So let's just do that right now. So uh, let's just convert the text to a smart object right off the get-go. And what I'm going to do is actually make a new file uh, so we can create our displacement map ourselves. And I can give you some tips on what to look for if you're making your own displacement maps. Let's just right click on our t-shirt layer, duplicate it and click on a new document. And we'll call this t-shirt displacement. All right, so now we have our uh, empty t-shirt layer. So the first thing you want to do is the parts where you don't want your text to move, you want to make those 50% gray. So we're going to make a new layer, go to edit, fill, 50% gray. So the reason why you want a 50% gray and not black or white is because if you remember from the first example, it becomes black, it basically moves up or down. And if it becomes white, it basically moves up. And when you're at 50% gray, it doesn't move at all because it's middle ground. So you want to use it as a background layer. So the next thing you want to do, make sure of is that your uh, displacement maps are always in completely black and white. So we're going to do that by going to uh, select our t-shirt layer, image, adjustments, use saturation, and we're just going to remove the saturation altogether. So here comes the like, important part. If we zoom in, there's a lot of different pixel data, as you can see. And essentially what is going to happen is your text is going to move uh, with each and every single pixel that you see here. So if you have a really high quality image, it might be a little bit too much. In the end, we want to blur that out a little bit. And I'm just going to go and convert it into a smart object. And I'm going to make sure to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And usually a blur of two pixels or something is fine. Uh, and my document is 3000 by 3000 pixels, by the way. So just a little bit of a reference there. You know, it's always different if you use different dimensions in your documents. Um, let's just go with three for now, I guess. Uh, so one more thing you want to go and take into account is you want to make a contrast where you want this band to be formed. So let's go to adjustments to curves. And we're going to make sure that the curves is clipping to our t-shirt layer only so we don't affect the background. And now we want to just drag these sliders in a little bit. And so what's happening now is you kind of want to have a sweet spot where you can see, okay, there's a the crease here or the folds are, or the wrinkles are, you know, visible. You know, you don't want to have them too, too harsh in there because, you know, as you can see this, there's a lot of like data in here still, uh, even if we blurred it out. So um, yeah, depending on whether you like it or not, make sure that at least the wrinkles here are visible and you know, uh, kind of changes as you go. And that's why I also made this into a um, non-destructive uh, displacement map, which basically means that I can just go back into this file, change the curves adjustments or change the Gaussian blur later if I would want to. What I'm gonna do now is save this document as, And we'll save this just here. So let's go back into the file we just made. And under the Dreadlabs, let's just go um, under this text layer that we already converted into a smart object. We'll go to Filter, Distort, Displace. Let's go with a horizontal and a vertical scale of 15 and see if that works. Click OK. And we'll load in the T-shirt displacement PSD that we just made. And as you can see, there's the folds uh, are already there. Um, so in order to see if this actually is working with the rest of the T-shirt, we obviously need to blend this text in a little bit more. Uh, and the way we're going to do that is double click on our Threadlabs layer. And as the text is white and the t-shirt is like darker, we want to go to the bottom layer here, the underlying layer. And we want to have the 
darker colors to bleed through. And if we hold Alt or Option on our keyboard, we can split these arrows and we can have this thing blend in a little bit more with the t-shirt. So the blending is not perfect, but you can kind of see that it works with the shadows, right? So the shadows are also visible in our text as well. And that's kind of what we want to go for, right? So yeah. Uh, that's also another way on how to use displacement maps in terms of mockups and stuff. So yeah, guys, there you have it. An explanation on what displacement maps are, uh, how to use them, and what to use them for. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below in the comments. And if you would like these files to have it for practice or something like that, they will be available on the Patreon page of my channel. So if you become a patron of mine, you got access to all of the project files from all of my tutorials, as well as an exclusive discount in my asset web store where I got the filled package and the t-shirt mockup package as well. So if you want to get that with a discount, you can become a patron of mine. And by becoming a patron, you also support this channel heavily, which makes me be able to give you guys a free tutorial video on a weekly basis. If you want to become a patron, there's a link down in the description. And if you do not have the budget to become a patron, leaving a like, a comment and subscribe on the channel really does a lot. With all of that being said, this was Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.